Can Lewis Hamilton further extend his championship lead in Singapore? Will Sebastian Vettel be able to win what is now a must-win race? And will Red Bull be back on form? Find out in this video. So here we are now for the flyaway season. And the first stop is the Marina Bay Street Circuit in Singapore. And here are some stats about this track. The track itself is just about 5 kilometers long, as the race will be ran over 61 laps. The first Grand Prix in Singapore was 10 years ago, a race that will be remembered for the crash gate scandal. And now there is no lap record, as the track layout has been slightly changed. Now last year's Singapore Grand Prix can only be remembered for one thing, that famous crash at the start, that effectively destroyed Sebastian Vettel's championship hopes at the time. It will be interesting to see if we get another championship defining moment in this race. But in last year's Grand Prix because of the crash at the start, Lewis Hamilton went on to win the race, extending his championship lead at the time. And it would be Daniel Ricciardo second with Valtteri Bottas in P3. But now let's see how the top teams are going to do in Singapore. Coming out of the European season Mercedes are feeling very good especially after their win at the Italian Grand Prix, and also because they won on Ferrari's home soil. But I think for this race things are going to be different, because as we know Singapore is one of Mercedes' worst tracks on the calendar. Last year in the drive they could only qualify in 5th and 6th, and let's be honest last year they only won the race because of that crash at the start. And unless something major like that happens again, I don't see how Mercedes are going to win because this is not a good track for Mercedes in normal conditions. So don't be surprised if Mercedes struggle through the weekend. Ferrari's home race really did not go to plan. In a race where they had to win, they failed to do so. And now come to Singapore, especially with Sebastian Vettel needing to win the race. And given what their car is like, I think they really should. They have a good enough combo of engine power and aerodynamics to do so. And I would be surprised if Ferrari did not get pole position. And also a race win. But the pressure is really on Ferrari this weekend. Anything other than a win for Sebastian Vettel is not good enough. Hopefully they don't crack under the pressure once again. After two races at Spa and Monza where Red Bull had to take a lot of pain, they now come to one of their best races normally on the calendar. Because still in my opinion Red Bull do have the best chassis. But there is one thing that is going to severely hamper their weekend. And that is of course their power unit. Now yes I know Singapore is not a power circuit. But the Red Bull in a straight line is so slow compared to Ferrari and Mercedes. Meaning that despite Red Bull having the best chassis for this track they're not going to be on pole. Because the difference in engine power is too much. As we saw a few weeks ago in Budapest, which is why they weren't the fastest at that track. But they should still seriously compete for a podium this weekend. Let's take a look though at the driver's standings. Lewis Hamilton leads by 30 points from Sebastian Vettel with Kimi Raikkonen in P3. Then Bottas is just behind in P4 with Verstappen in P5 and Ricardo in P6. Vettel has to close down the gap in the championship this weekend. Because if he does not, his chances might be over. Now though, let's see what the midfield teams are going to do this weekend. Coming into 2018, you would have thought that Singapore would suit the McLaren car. But in reality, because the McLaren aerodynamically is so poor, they are going to struggle again. Now I do think they'll be closer to the top 10 so they won't be miles off. But not close enough seriously in qualifying at least to get inside the top 10. But of course you do have to watch out for Fernando Alonso, as historically this is one of his best tracks. So he could massively outperform the car again this weekend. For the first time since Hungary, Renault come to a track where they really should be fast, as their car despite lacking serious engine power, is still a very good aerodynamic car. And if you couple that with the upgrades that Renault are bringing for this race, Renault do not have an excuse not to be in the top 10. And if they're going to hold off Haas for 4th in the Constructors, they have to perform. Now you would not think for Singapore that 4th India would be any good. 
neither would I. But because of the massive progress they've made since their new investment, and with the upgrades they are bringing for this weekend's race, Force India could be a surprise package. Now are Force India going to be as good as they were at Spa and Monza? No, probably not. But don't be surprised if they're fighting hard with both Haas and Renault, because this car at the moment is very, very good. And this weekend they could cause a shock. For this race, Williams are going to be crashing back down to earth. Everything you need to be good at this track they don't have. So as they have done for most of 2018, they are going to massively struggle. After decent outings at Spa and Monza, Toro Rosso are going to be very good this weekend. As they have a great record at this track. Scoring points on most of the races they've competed in. And it would not come as any surprise if they scored points again. They are certainly a dark horse for this race. Don't be surprised if Toro Rosso are very quick. After having one of their cars disqualified from the Italian Grand Prix, Haas come to Singapore very determined, as they now have to refocus on catching Renault for fourth, something they thought they did at the Italian Grand Prix. Now for this weekend, they should be battling seriously with Renault and Force India. And I think at least with one of their cars scoring points. But I'm just not quite sure where they're going to be. It's not like they've had a great record at this track. But at worst they're going to be fighting for the last points paying positions. Hopefully Haas can get back on track. Coming into this weekend for Sauber there is big news for one of their drivers. That Charles Leclerc will be driving for Ferrari in 2019. With Kimi Raikkonen going in the other way. That is great news for Leclerc. Now is he ready for that Ferrari seat? We'll just have to see in 2019. Right now we can't possibly know. But I really do hope that he is ready. But looking at this weekend, Sauber are not going to be quick. They do tend to struggle at tracks like this. And unless on Sunday we get a crazy race, I don't see how they score points at all. Before I go though, let's look at the constructors' standings. Mercedes just about lead from Ferrari with Red Bull in P3. Ferrari also have to start gaining in the constructors. Then Renault are 10 points ahead of Haas for 4th place. With McLaren in P6 and Force India in P7. Then it's Toro Rosso P8, Sauber P9 and Williams last of all. We are going to get a very interesting battle in the midfield for sure. But guys this is my upload schedule for this weekend. On Friday at 6pm UK time I'm doing a Singapore practice 1 and 2 review live. Then on Saturday at 1pm UK time again live I'm doing a qualifying watch along. Then on Saturday night in the UK will be a qualifying review. Then at 10 past 12 UK time on Sunday will be live for the race watch along. And then live again at 4pm for the race reaction. With a full race review at 4pm on Monday. Hopefully you guys can join me for this weekend. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys to join my Discord server. There's a link below down in the description. Also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video. And comment down below what do you think will happen this weekend in Singapore. Please comment down below what you think about those topics. And until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.